I talked to plenty of passengers while on board, not just on Princess ships, but all cruise lines that are new to cruising, but also those who have cruised before. What I find is there are consistently six traps that passengers are falling into that could not only cost them money, but ruin their vacation too. My name's Andrew, and welcome back to Tidal Horizons. We're experts when it comes to Princess Cruises. We cover them extensively here on the channel with news, reviews, tours, and vlogs. Routinely, I see passengers on all cruise lines falling into these traps, but we're going to put a princess spin on it and try to help you out with specific issues. The first thing you need to understand is that Carnival Corporation, Princess's parent company, is a money-making juggernaut with the sole purpose being to extract as much money from your pocket as possible, especially once you're on board. For the fiscal year 2023, Carnival had revenues of $14 billion in passenger tickets, otherwise known as your cruise fare, with another $7.5 billion in onboard spending. That's $1.75 billion that they aim to grow. This leads us directly into the first trap that some passengers are falling into. That is either purchasing Princess Plus or Premier when they don't need it, or not purchasing it when it could save them money. As we discussed in our extensive Princess Plus versus Princess Premier videos, we know that the cruise lines are not going to offer something that they aren't going to make money on when averaged out. Let's address why you wouldn't or would want to buy it by first saying you need to be really honest with yourself about what you will spend on a cruise when you decide if you're going to get the package or not. Are you going to drink alcohol, soda, bottled water, or specialty coffee? Or are you going to stick with the free beverages like ice water, iced tea, and juices at the buffet, and the regular coffee? How many of each of those paid items are you likely to consume each day given your port schedule and that you are on vacation? Once you've honestly estimated what you may consume, it's pretty easy to figure out if the package is worth it. Again, for me it's almost always worth it on board Princess, but perhaps not other cruise lines. It's simply honest math. Don't get caught up in the emotion of the cruise line making money or the class of service. Watch our videos, we get very specific on this topic. So why would Princess want these packages? Well, the biggest reason is that they get to sit on your money and make interest off it in their bank accounts months or even years before you cruise. It's also easier for the crew to deal with a mostly all-inclusive environment where they don't need to ask for signatures or PIN numbers from passengers. It also loosens your purse strings once you're on board for other spending because subconsciously you aren't counting what you paid in advance when thinking about that final bill. So the trap might be not buying it when you don't need it, or vice versa, but there's also another trap too. Don't feel pressured into buying the package as soon as you book the cruise, unless there's a very specific sale that includes the package. There's no cost difference between adding it at booking time or sometime afterwards. You might get pressure from a travel agent to add it because they are paid commission on it. You can do your research, do your math, and add it later. They'll still get their commission if you add it before sailing. Don't fall into the pressure trap. Finally, the last money-wasting trap for this section, it's very rarely worth adding the package for children. It's cheaper to upgrade to a four-device internet plan and paying the rest out of pocket. Don't be pressured into adding this for them unless they're the second passenger in the cabin. This next trap is easy to fall into, but it's not the worst on the list depending on how far before sailing you book. You generally should always watch the price of your cruise after you book to see if a better deal comes up. If you've been watching our channel for a while, you know that I always recommend finding a really good travel agent who can help refair your booking if a lower price comes up. Be careful though when you make the booking and make sure that your fare type allows this. Some are non-refundable deposits or groups that won't permit this. You may also need to cancel one booking and rebook to another which can affect things like dining reservations. What's the old saying? Don't cut off your nose to spite your face? If you are going to save a couple of hundred dollars, be sure you understand what you might be losing to refare, like onboard credits, dining reservations, or a change in stateroom category or location. What you should do is take advantage of Princess's price guarantee if it's in place when you book. It constantly changes, so you'll need to look for their better than price guarantee on the Princess website. This guarantee pays you back if the price drops before final payment date. Read the fine print for details. 
Cruising is going to get more expensive and complex. It's constantly changing with news every day. Give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. We're constantly on the watch for news for Princess and other premium cruise lines too. Another ingenious way that Princess and most major cruise lines make more money is with the stateroom upgrade bidding program. Upgrades used to be occasionally free and sometimes offered for a price, but no more. The bidding system ensures that all of the most expensive staterooms on the ship are occupied at the highest possible price and has generated millions of dollars for Princess. In many cases, people are bidding more for a stateroom than they would have paid for it outright in the first place. If a bid really interests you, say from a balcony to reserve mini suite, then make sure you record what the cost difference is between them at the time of booking. I have certainly used the upgrade bidding system when the stateroom category I wanted wasn't available and I didn't mind making an aggressive bid. This worked out for me on our Sun Princess voyage in July 2024. Again, like Princess Plus, do the math ahead of time and have a plan. You'll save yourself money in the long run. Don't fall into the competitive overbidding and marketing traps. This trap is all about leaving money on the table that you didn't realize you had. Depending on your captain's circle loyalty level, you have certain perks available to you. Do you know what they are? For Platinum members, for example, you get 50% off your internet package. Factor this into your calculations to see if Princess Plus is still worth it for you. Captain Circle members may also be able to book cruises earlier than the general public. Platinum and Elite members can book dining before final payment on a cruise has been made. These are huge advantages over others. Make sure you use them. Depending on your stateroom or suite, you may also have inclusions like a dedicated restaurant or lounge if you're in a suite. Finally, Carnival Corporation stockholders who hold 100 or more shares can be entitled to up to $250 in onboard credit depending on the length of sailing and brand. Check out the Carnival Corporation website under Investor Relations for details. There could be a ton of hidden perks. Ask your room steward, future cruise consultant, travel agent, or your Captain Circle host for details of anything you want to know more about. That's why they're there. This is more of an emotional trap than it is a financial one, although there is a money component. Princess, through the cruise passage contract that you agree to, has the right to change their itinerary at any time without compensation to you. Now, it's usually operational, safety, or weather-related matter, but occasionally a political issue like Haiti or the Middle East that recently affected cruises. Princess is not obligated to refund in whole or in part for missed ports. They are only obligated to return port taxes or fees that were collected for that port, which is usually minimal. Sometimes they will do something out of goodwill, but legally they're not obligated to. Miss ports are a part of cruising. I've missed out on Greenland, Mykonos, Grand Cayman, and Grand Turk over the years, sometimes multiple times. Don't fall into the emotional trap. It's not personal, so don't be that angry person at guest services or stomping around the ship. The more you cruise, the more ports you're going to miss. As we've just talked about, the passage contract is pretty much the guide of how your cruise will be carried out. It spells out everything from what you can and can't do on board, what rights you have for litigation, and what's included with your passage. You need to take the time and review this document because it lays out many important rules and regulations that the cruise will follow. We'll give you a few examples here, but for your protection, don't take our word for it, check it out for yourself, and don't trust everything you see on the internet. Your refund policy, and what changes you can make to names in a stateroom before it's considered a cancellation. How many weeks pregnant a passenger may be, and what proof may be required for particular journeys. What ages kids must be to occupy a stateroom by themselves without an adult in the room. The minimum ages for certain cruises for babies changes depending on the itinerary. What is the age of majority that may be used for alcohol and gambling? It depends on your cruise. Possible medical restrictions for certain ailments and certain cruise itineraries. If you have any questions about these items or any other item that might be out of the ordinary, the first stop is the passage contract. But don't fall into the trap of not knowing. You don't want to show up at your departure port and not be able to meet one of the requirements for passage. You don't want to be left behind without any recourse. 
I've given you at least six major traps that cruisers frequently find themselves falling into. Hopefully, with a little knowledge, you'll avoid them in the future. Make sure you check out our Princess Plus versus Princess Premier video here. The cruise industry is in constant change, so partner up with us by subscribing to the channel and stay up to date on the latest. Thanks for watching.